Hello, this is Chris Voss here from the Chris Voss Show. I come to ChrisVossShow.com. Here are the blog posts we want to share with you. Of course, we view the latest in social media and technology. And uh, what we're going to be doing today is doing a versus comparison against the HTC X1 from AT&T against the AT&T Sony Xperia Ion with the newly updated OS Android 4.04. Now, we did do a review once before on both these devices comparison and on the Sony Xperia Ion, but it now has the latest update. It originally had Gingerbread, which is version 2.3.7, I believe, uh, and which is pretty lame at the time, and we thought. Uh, but now it's been updated to uh, the Android 4.04 system, and we wanted to see uh, if it improved and got better. And it definitely has in our minds as to how we feel about it. So that's our opinion so far. We really like it. So we're going to compare these two phones. You can go to att.com, and uh, both phones are provided by AT&T. Thanks to AT&T for helping us out. Um, be sure to check them out and tell them Chris Voss sent you. Be sure to subscribe to our YouTube feeds and the ChrisVossShow.com. Let's get into both these devices. The height on the uh, HTC One X is 5.3 by 275 by 0.38. The uh, weight is a 4.75 uh, Ounces. The talk time is 8.5 hours max. It has a standby of uh, 302 hours max. It has an 1800 milliamp battery in it. And it has a display of an LCD uh, color TFT TFD resolution 720 by 1280 pixels and a 4.7 diagonal uh, screen. Super LCD. It's got Android 4.03 on it plus HTC Sense 4. It's got a processor of 1.5 gigahertz Qualcomm Snapdragon S4 processor dual core, 16 gigabytes internal storage raw hardware, 12.1 gigabyte internal storage available to user, and 1 gigabytes of RAM. Uh, on this it has a back camera of uh, 32 uh, Let's see, I'm sorry, a resolution of 8 megapixels. And on that camera, you can take and get 1080p HD, of course, and a front resolution of 1.3 megapixels. Now, let's take a look at the uh, Sony Xperia Ion. What we're looking at with the Sony Xperia is a height of 5.2 times 2.7 times 0.4 four inches, a weight of 5.1 ounces. Talk time is four hours max and the uh, standby is 350 hours max. And the battery is a 1900 milliamp battery. It has a LCD color TFT, TFD resolution 12, 720 by 1280 pixels, four and a half diagonal inch screen, color sir 16.7 million 24 bit, and uh, Android uh, version that originally came out of this, like I said, it was 2.3.7, but now it has 4.04 on it. Um, and you can also see uh, we're bringing up the Android One X, also has been updated to 4.04, so we have the faster update there. Uh, and the processor is 1.5 gigahertz Qualcomm Snapdragon S3 dual core processor in the Sony. Memory is a 16 gigabyte internal storage raw hardware, 13.2 gigabyte internal storage available to users, one gigabytes of RAM. Uh, on it, uh, it has expandable memory where you can upgrade the memory with a micro SD card um, up to, I believe, 32 megahertz, uh, or 32 gigabyte, gigabytes, I should say. Resolution is 12 plus megapixels. Uh, on the back camera, so it's pretty huge in that sense. Front facing resolution is 1.3 megapixel. HDMI output, you can actually put this out to your TV and do some cool things on it with the TV, much like you can with an iPad um, or an iPhone. It's really cool the integration they put into it. Front facing camera is a 1.3 megapixel with Skype. Uh, so those are the details on both these two devices. Uh, they both, like I said, are now running 4.04s from the update that we've done on them. Uh, you can see some of the differences between the two. Not much to see here in the notifications menu and all that good stuff. Pretty much the same. They both each have, uh, I believe, a finite swipe to them. And they go from left to right, right to left. Of course, they have the Android system where you can add different widgets and everything else to them to make them look cooler. You can customize your folders and everything else. A lot of people do like those customizable features of both devices. <clears throat> Let's take a look at the bodies on each of these. We've got a speaker at the top for making calls. We've got a front-facing camera right here. We have a back button, a home button, and a 
recent apps button. Now, with the 4.04 Android update, you can actually change and adjust this button to be a menu button as opposed to just, say, a uh, recent apps button. And I believe we've changed it to where it's a menu button. Now, if we think if we hold this, it becomes a recent apps button. And so you can change this touch where normally before the 4.04 Android update, you couldn't do that. On the uh, uh, Sony, of course, it has its own menu button that you can see there. So let's take a look at a few tests that we've run with both these devices. Uh, we're going to go ahead and pull open the speed tests so that you can see how each of these devices ran with their respective speed tests. Now, when we did run these, we ran these off a log, uh, and the Wi-Fi has since been turned on. So originally, they were turned off for the log you see here. You can see here some of the scores with the AT&T uh, service on both these and how well they performed and uh, were able to bring down uh, up data and upload it so you can see our speed test scores there that we took and did. Let's go into some other benchmarking tests that we pulled from so you can take and see those. We go in the AND22 benchmarks so that you can see how those scores came out. Unfortunately, they uh, keep these archived for us so that you can see the detailed scores here if we can get everybody to work. Sometimes we have some issues with their app and this menu system it seems to happen on every phone we have with the N22 benchmarking software. So here you can see uh, the scores that we got on the N22 benchmark 6686 versus 6781. You can see how the scores break down. So uh, we have noticed that the Sony, since getting the uh, Android 4.04 software on it is definitely a lot faster. It's a blazing little phone and we've been very impressed with uh, the way it's operated, etc, cetera, etc. Cetera. Okay, so now we can see here both scores on the Geekbench 2. Uh, the uh, 1X came in at 5, or I'm sorry, 1531 and the uh, so they came in at 938. You can see how they broke down with the integer scores and everything else. I'll just page down here so you can compare both devices one against each other. You can, of course, pause the video if you want to look at the individual scores, but there's really not much need for that. You can go through the summary if you like. Great thing about these, of course, is you can follow along at home with the scores to see how your device compares. Okay, so here you can see how each device benchmarked uh, on the GL benchmark 2.5.1. We've got on the top test, which we did, it's the main one we want to look at, the uh, 1X did 24, 24 frames at 21 frames per second, where the uh, on the HD test, it did 1388 frames at 12 frames per second on the AT&T phone. Uh, with the Sony, if you will, what we want to do is bring up the Veloma scores that we'll pull up next, and we'll go ahead and bring those scores up so you can see them, and of course this will pull from the log so that we don't have to go through the huge benchmarking uh, thing once again. You can see here that the Velamo scores, now this pulls like SunSpider and a few different other websites. Uh, you've got 1604 on the HTML5, 1401 on the Velamo scores on the Sony, 1632 on the Metal, 387 on the Metal for the Sony. All right, so here you can see the color test on both these devices. Uh, they both have pretty good color on the screens. I actually like the green better on the Sony. Sony looks uh, much, much richer on the greener. Uh, the reds, the blues look much more richer and darker, and so does the purple. So uh, definitely the uh, Sony's winning on this test when it comes down to the quality of the colors that I can see here visually on the screen. Okay, so here we have the, uh, this is the new AN22 3D rating on Benchmark. Uh, the 1X scored 3033 against 2159 on the Sony Xperia Ion. Okay, so now we're doing what's called the uh, billion counter test. This uh, tests how fast each device can count to a billion. And the uh, 1X did it in 19.54 uh, uh, seconds as opposed to the uh, AT&T Sony did it in 33.752 seconds. Okay, here you can see the Andy bench scores. This measures the native threads and Java thread speed of the phone. The uh, 1X came in at 57.71 against uh, 44.05 on the AT&T Sony, and uh, 191 on the Java against 129. All right, so here we can see using the quadrant standard test how each device came out. The 1X came out at 5,044 against 3,031 on this Sony. So you can see how those came out, and of course a lot of different the other ones here, there. 
Okay, so now here's a GPS test, and what this does is test how well each device can uh, get its uh, GPS on and pick up as many satellites as possible. You see here the One X is picking up about 18 total satellites, and 12 in use. Uh, the um, GPS on the AT&T phone is picking up 19 uh, and 11 in use, with an accuracy of about 10 to 20 feet between both these devices. Um, so you can see how well they're coming out. For some reason, it's not picking up a lot of different. Uh, GPS is on the Sony for some reason, so that's very interesting. All right, so here we've run the KFS benchmark, so you can see how each of these devices come out. Uh, the uh, KFS benchmark overall score on the Sony was 22.612, and on the One X was 35.548. So definitely a complete difference in the speed of both these devices, as you can see here, and the frames per second as to what they can process. Okay, so here you can see on each of these, uh, this is the SQL RL benchmark, SQL Lite performance. This uh, runs a number of tests with indexes, uh, tables, and everything else that are taken and calculated here. You can see some of the different scores and how they came out. Let's go ahead and page down through these, and you can see overall we got on the 1X 27.989, and the Sony 72.9. 464. Okay, so now what we've done is we're doing speed tests on the hotspot ability of both phones and both phones' ability to uh, put out great speed. And of course, some of this has to do, come down to do with the character carriers, but you can also kind of see how this compares. Now, this is uh, a rundown of several tests we did with the HTC One X. Uh, this is through AT&T, and we're using an Apple iPad 3 or new iPad, however you want to call it, to take and process the data. As you know, the iPad 3 is a huge data suck, so uh, we, that makes a great testing thing. So here's some of our speed test results. You can see for the uh, for the uh, HTC One X. Okay, so this is the uh, speed test we did of the hotspot for the Sony. Uh, we were using the Sony as a hotspot, and then what we're doing is running it through an iPad. Uh, and then doing speed tests using the Sony's hotspot. So you can see here the results and numbers that we got in the uh, service from the Sony as a hotspot. Okay, so here we're using the AT&T service to take and do the video call. There is some difference in the quality that we're seeing with the HTC One front-facing camera. Uh, and I don't think it's a, a difference of... Um, I don't think it's a difference of uh, AT&T's service. It really does look like it's uh, not quite as quality for a front-facing camera that we're getting over here on the iPad 3 that we got on the S. Um, it could be the S is definitely faster in a lot of the benchmarking tests that we ran. But this gives you a good idea. You can compare apples to uh, apples with this. Um, this is running through AT&T's network, so you can see how the results are that way. Looks like both phones perform very well and very fast. Okay, so now here's a call that we're taking and doing through the uh, AT&T network where we're processing a call uh, through Skype. Uh, in this case, we're not using a localized Wi-Fi. We're using a front-facing camera uh, going through the AT&T network. Um, definitely got some uh, slow delays here that we're running into. Uh, could be our location that we're at uh, and the antenna or whatever uh, area we're in. Uh, but we should be getting a good feed from AT&T. Um, who knows what it could be. It could be the processor on the Sony is not outputting as well uh, when it's running through a more limited source uh, such as the AT&T network as compared to a localized Wi-Fi. Because you can see earlier on localized Wi-Fi I got a great image. So there you go. It sounds to speak a lot of the processor in each device and how they process images and data. Okay, so now I'm taking a look at the HTC One X. Uh, everything's pretty much similar, everything in its operation, how it operates, not much changes here. Uh, there evidently was some small improvements to the camera that you won't notice on the back end that was found in the uh, 4.04 update. Uh, once again, really great pictures um, that I love with the um, with the X. The camera, the pictures do seem to be better, but maybe it's because I'm seeing them through a bigger screen. It's not much, it's very slight, but you can see here once again lots of yellows, uh, lots of greens, but it takes great photos and it brings out the brightness very well. Let's take a look at video. Video once again, I'm pretty sure these probably have the same internal build of camera 
they both take really great video shots you almost can't really notice the difference other than the fact that one screen is bigger than the other here's a low light shot of course you can see here the colors pop this is completely dark it brought everything out and did very well uh, in a shoot same thing with a low light video situation here uh, perform very well at getting this stuff done um, so yeah both phones operated really, really well, and I think they're similar in comparison when it comes to the camera build. So you're probably not going to determine much between the two cameras, uh, given as how they are that way. Okay, so let's take a look at the camera on the Sony. It's got a great camera on it, at 12 megapixels. Originally, when we uh, reviewed this phone, we reviewed it against the... Uh, uh, iPhone 4S and it came out really well in comparing with the phones with the 4S. Now like all Android phones you've got a switch over here uh, of course there's switches in different places and different Android phones but they have some of the same features you got a switch between your uh, camera and your uh, video uh, you've got your shutter button here you've got an area to get into your pictures you've got different ways to control screens uh, for scene recognition you've also got uh, different uh, scenes you can take and do um, you can control your iOS settings, you can see over, over here, and you can of course control your lamp settings for uh, red eye reduction, fill flash, all that sort of good stuff. You also have the ability to control a lot of the stuff, the resolution you're using, etc, etc, geotagging, saving, capturing method, all sorts of different ways that you can take and do to customize this menu. Same thing with when you go into video mode, you of course have the ability to change different scenes on video mode. You can uh, use video camera or the front camera to record all that good stuff. You can change your ISO. You can of course make it so you use the lamp or not. Camera wise, it came out with great photos for us. Here you can see a low light video that we're taking the lamp on the back of the video camera and this is a completely dark situation that we're playing this or recording this video in. But uh, in essence you can see here that it it uh, brightens up everything really well. It's got a great lamp to it and uh, takes really good uh, color completely in the dark video as you can see there. Here's some pictures of flash and this is completely in the dark so this is uh, finding and getting the colors in a flash. The lamp flash on it's really good. This first one we were moving the device around so we didn't get a good it had some trouble getting the focus before it hit it. This was a good hit with the focus where we kept it in one place. Um, you can see here some really beautiful pictures that it came out with and was able to take. You can see here the detail on the road. See the rugged detail on the road and the uh, the uh, dig and the rock formations uh, on the asphalt. So uh, it came out really well with the pictures that we took. Great, beautiful pictures with this camera. And uh, it's really hard to go wrong. So we love the camera on the Sony Xperia Ion, 12 megapixel back camera. Uh, it's really nice. Okay, so now both devices are wonderful devices. Uh, you can find both of them at AT&T.com, the HEC One X, and also the Sony Xperia Ion. You can find at uh, uh, AT&T.com. But both Chris Voss tested, Chris Voss approved. Tell them Chris Voss sent you. Um, and uh, be sure to check into all of our different uh, YouTube accounts for all the videos we do and the uh, ChrisVoschShow.com website. Uh, both great phones within their own right. I love the 12 megapixel camera over here on the uh, Sony uh, and I also love the speed and big screen of the AT&T One X. So it's up to you to decide which one you like better from the data we provided you here. Be sure to tune in often on the ChrisVoschShow.com.